Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato on Today's Everything Music. It's What Makes This Song Great, episode 78. The band is the Deftones and the song is coming up next. <laughs> The song we're talking about today is called Minerva, and it's off the Deftones' fourth record that is self-titled. It came out in May of 2003. Now, a lot of you thought I was going to do the song Digital Bath, which I originally thought, but then I decided to do Minerva because it has such an interesting melody. And it also has a lot of shoegazing elements to it, and there's some fascinating melody choices. The record was engineered and mixed by Terry Date. Now Terry had also done White Pony and he's such a great producer and engineer. He always makes great sounding records and I, I've been a huge fan of his for the last 30 years. So the song begins with solo guitar, tune down a half step and drop D and the first chord is A minor 11. Now, some of you are thinking, oh, he's playing the part wrong. Well, when you listen to it, it sounds like it's going like this. But there's actually a keyboard part that's playing that, that blends with it. Let me play the two parts together, listen. And listen. So that part is in there the whole time. So it sounds like a Nord with pitch bend there. Kind of out of tune, but hip. Oh, that is so heavy with the heavy guitars blended together once again. Listen, it creates this beautiful shoegazer sound is what it is, really. It sounds like the band Hum or Swerve Driver or My Bloody Valentine. It has that kind of vibe. I love this. So in that intro, what you think are two guitars, I always thought it was two guitars, but it's really the guitar playing one octave line and then the synth does the harmony part to it and it fits perfectly in there. You just, you don't even notice that there's a synth, but it adds that ethereal vibe of the intro. Next, let's solo cheese bass part and Abe's drums in this section to hear how they're adding to the heaviness. Next, the verse vocals enter, and Chino comes in with a classic Deftones type melody. Listen to it. Okay, so right there, what he's singing over the chord, let's just say it's in D, even though it's in, uh, it's dropped down. He sings from the fifth to the ninth. Then down to the root, but because there's a sus4 in the keyboard and guitar, he's actually making that kind of a chord. Well, that's actually similar to the to the intro chord, right? So it's a double suspension. It's got a sus4 in the guitar and keyboard, and then the ninth in the melody. And you'll notice when I solo the vocal that it actually goes into a double track. Right here. When she sings it's over. Chino is a great singer, 
But my favorite part of his singing are the notes he decides to go to. So beyond the ninth at the beginning, then he goes down to the to the major seventh when it goes into that double tracked falsetto. The combination of having the seventh of the chord in the melody sung in falsetto and double tracked really makes it ethereal. On the next phrase, we have another surprise note in the melody. Check it out. So we've gone from major to minor. Duh. And then duh, the guitar, the keyboard actually goes to that major seventh. So it gives you that type of dissonance. It's almost like a minor major seven chord right there. Uh, it would be like. So you've gone from that suspended sound. To that augmented sound there. You might call it demented. Perfectly sung, too. Such a no. Awesome, right? And right there, da da da. All the interval jumps are so strong. From the sus4 to the major third to the major seventh. Now we just had minor, right? We just had. Then we're back to, to major with the major seventh. Those upper extensions, the ninths, the major sevenths, the thirteens, the elevens, that's really what makes Chino's vocal melodies great, are those haunting tones, as one of my friends used to call them. That's actually pretty appropriate for this. Next we hit the chorus. When he goes, God bless you all. So he's going to, to that G power chord there, but he's singing the, the ninth against him. Once again, that's sus too. So, da, 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 da. Let's check out what's going on in the keyboards, what, what Frank is doing and the guitar feedback sound together during this. It's beautiful. Listen. Amazing. Listen to it with the guitars. Just the guitars and the keys. And then we're back to Back to the intro verse part. Let's check out the drums and bass in the chorus. Here's the pickup into it with a fill. Listen. Blah, that flam. It's great. And what she plays here is really good. Listen to this fill, bass fill. Oh, that makes it. That high note, da 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 So good. Oh man, it just leads you in. Listen to how, how it flows into the chorus. You don't even notice it, but it's just so, it's just the right notes there, the right fill. So here's the bass and drums together in the chorus. I love that kick pattern. He kind of reverses this when he's going, da, da, da. listen. To do that, to do. Really great, great pattern. Those open hi hats are sloshy, but they're not going too much. They're just moving beautifully. Listen. Once again, Terry Date. That's how an open hi hat should sound. It's just, it's not too hashy sounding. It's real powerful and incredibly clear. Let's solo the chorus vocals again. I want you to hear the double tracking that's going on. They do double tracking so they will cut through the heavy distorted guitars, but they also add 
an ethereal vibe. Let's listen. And God bless you all for the song you sang us. Moving on to the second verse, I want to point out something that's also in the first verse, a guitar part that really, once again, adds to that mood, the ambience of it. Listen. Listen to it. Listen to the mix. Now you'll notice he's singing that note da, against that major third. That's another place where that dissonance is really intense. So you actually have the major third and the minor third together. Then it kind of goes down to that major seventh. So these dissonant notes that Chino is singing are, are uh, that's what makes it so intense. Listen again. Coming up here. Beautiful. Then. Some really great things going on here in this second chorus. Listen here in the keys and the... Beautiful. Put the bass in. Check out this fill that happens in the second chorus. Right here. So good. What Abe does in the drums, he plays a lot of da da uh with a kick drum right after the snare, snare kick. A lot of the 16th note, da do do da da uh right? Those really propel the groove to me. da uh right? da da uh da do do da uh Next we have the bridge breakdown that goes back to the intro. You said this low pad, ooh, yeah. And then back. Oh, listen to that fill, so good. Oh, so low. Listen. The sound effect that happens before, listen. And then, we have the break, and you hear that line. Right?
That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. If you're a first time viewer, don't forget to ring the bell. If you're interested in the Beato book, go to my website at www.rickbeato.com. Check out the new Beato Ear Training program that you can find at beatoeartraining.com. Check out the intro video for that. Follow me on Instagram at rickbeato1. And if you want to support the channel even more, think about becoming a member of the Beato Club. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you.